Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill and I am so excited. It's almost the middle of May and in theory that's when we're not supposed to get frost anymore. So today I'm planting annuals in containers around my house. I love picking out different types of plants, love planting them and then enjoying them throughout the summer. So today I'm planting three completely different types of containers. So let me take you through the steps so that you can plant your own containers and have great success. This is a self-watering container. You'll notice that there is a little opening here through which you can put a hose, fill in the reservoir in the bottom of the pot. Now I'm lucky I have a drip watering system that once this pot is planted, the tubing is going to go into a little hole on the side here and every time the sprinkler back here runs it's going to fill this reservoir which is really nice. So there's a little grid in here and when you're filling this type of pot with potting soil you pack the soil into these little slots here. The plants roots will grow down into them and they'll water themselves because the roots will go down near the water. I love these because if you're out of town for a few days, you don't have to worry about the pot drying out. A lot of times containers will dry out and that's really a problem because it stresses the plants. So then you don't have to worry about them. You'll notice all these plants over here. These are all going into this pot. The great thing with containers and annuals is you just pack them into the pot. I probably could have even gotten some more. You pack them in, you enjoy them all season long and then that's it. So you don't really have to go by normal spacing. So let me show you how to plant this up and we'll get started. From left to right I'll be planting Lantana Lucky, Coleus Big Red Judy, Chartreuse Sweet Potato Vine, Canna Lily Tropicana Gold, and Million Bell's Mini Famous Watermelon. As you can see I decided to go with warm colors for these big pots. The first thing I do is put plenty of potting soil into the container. Don't use garden soil as it will compress, making it harder for the water to move through it and also for the roots to grow. Your goal is to have the potting soil be about an inch below the lip of the container. That way when you water it, the soil and water won't run over the edge. As you remove each plant from its individual container, look at the root system. If it's root bound, meaning there are a ton of roots circling the pot, tease them apart a little before planting it. I like to audition the plants while they're still in their pots before I plant them into the container. That way you can come up with the most pleasing layout first. Okay, everything has been planted and I think this pot looks pretty good. They're little plants but they will spread out and look great all summer long. You know, to ensure that they look great all summer long, one thing I'm going to do is to add a little bit of slow release fertilizer. I'll just sprinkle it over the surface of the soil and that will nourish the plants as they become established. I'll do it again in about a month and a half because I want to make sure they bloom all summer long. So that's an important step. The next thing I'm going to do is to take all of these plant labels that I took out of the individual pots and I'm going to tuck them into the back corner of this container. That's because I can guarantee if somebody comes over and says, what a pretty million bells or what a pretty coleus, what is that? I won't remember, so I just pull out a tag and I know what it is. The last thing I do is I water this pot really well. Even though it's a self-watering pot, it will take their plants roots a while to reach down into the reservoir and water themselves. So I want to make sure I water the surface of the pot. I'm going to keep this reservoir full as I mentioned earlier and I want to watch for any signs of wilting or stress to make sure the plants are doing really well so they get off to a great start. The next container project is to plant the two picket style planters on my front porch. There is a plastic window box type of pot inside each picket planter so that's what I put my plants in. I overwintered my geraniums from last year so each pot will get four of them plus two trailing blue terenia vines which are also known as wishbone flowers. They bloom great in shade to part shade which is ideal for my front porch. Here's a close-up of one of the geraniums that I overwintered. It's called Pinto Premium White to Rose. Isn't it pretty? 
If you're not using a potting soil that contains water-retaining polymers, such as miracle Grow, that can be helpful to add to the soil. You can find it at garden centers. Containers can easily dry out, so this really makes a difference. Once I finished planting everything, I sprinkled some slow-release fertilizer on top of the soil. I'll do that again in about six weeks to keep the plants blooming all summer. Here's how one of the picket planters looks, and of course the plants will really fill it in over the next few weeks. The final container project involves the planting of two hanging baskets for my front porch. This time I'm planting two colors of million bells, grape punch and mini famous purple. I thought it would be fun to have a color combination in them. The first thing I do is place a coffee filter over the holes in the bottoms of the pots so the soil won't leak out when the pot is watered. Because I want the plants to trail over the sides of the pot, look how I plant them next to the pot's edge on a bit of an angle. That gets the plant growing in the desired direction. I carefully cover the roots of every plant and press firmly to eliminate any air pockets. And here's how the planted pot looks. I love those colors. This is just a quick reminder to really keep an eye on the moisture in the soil of your containers. Happy gardening! Thank you.